What's up ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another episode of High Stakes Action from Mayfair London. My name is Lex Veltuis and this is the Triton High Stakes Circuit. Alright, it looks like uh, they bumped up the stakes. Last episode we were playing 2,000-4,000 pounds. Okay. Looks like they either added a straddle and possibly some antis. We will find out soon. <coughs> My best guess is that this game now is 2000 4000, 8000 straddle with a 4000 big blind anti. Straddle might be optional. And already 60,000 pounds just going to the flop, single raised pot. That would be a straight. Pretty nice uh, flop. I love that he checks this. A lot of pre-flop raises when they have hand like ace king, ace queen, they will give up on this flop. Tom Tom might be uh, really tempted to take a stab at this uh, at any point to take this away. This card is a disaster for him. I'm gonna be very happy with that. Shanghai Wong bets the pot. 58,000 pounds. This is what a straddle can do to a game, ladies and gentlemen. The action just explodes sometimes. So much out there to fight for and debt money. <laughs> Duan is 270,000 total on his stack. He's gonna go all in. Doesn't want to face a tough river decision when there would be a bad card. Shanghai Wong just wants to make sure how much it is, but can't see him going anywhere. Huh? <laughs> How much? <laughs> 400. <laughs> okay, okay. Open. Quick. Uh, Duan a little bit surprised that it took a little bit for Shanghai Wang to call there. Oh, Chang Chen, that's right. How much? How much? Show me ma. Yeah, no bad intent there from Shanghai Wong. Tom Duan takes it very well, of course. So, massive pot there for Shanghai Wong, our biggest pot so far in this cash game. He's doing very well for himself. Off to a great start. Tom Duan in for another 400,000 pounds. And there we see the blind levels updated. 2,000, 4,000, 4,000. Missed a big blind pays the ante. Change we've seen over the last few years in poker. Makes the game much faster. Doesn't really change much about the game. Instead of the dealer having to ask everybody, ante please, ante please. He tank. He tank. Four five. What was the flop? Six seven eight. Oh, four five ten. King queen. King queen. That was four five ten. Okay. 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 Okay.
Can you please confirm that you uh, just rebuff 400k, please? Oh, Thank man. you. Oh, <laughs> Cash game is being played on the Triton Million events in London, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Cash game is sponsored by Les Ambassadeurs. Oh, we see Mr. Liang there. Taking it slow with two kings. Why can Yong with a very powerful end himself? And the ace of diamonds. Very tricky. I like what Mr. Liang is thinking there. I mean, there's so many aggressive players at the table. We have the likes of Ten Xuan, Tom Duan behind you. They're going to be licking their chops when they see a raise and a call in front of them. It doesn't change anything. It's gonna make Mr. Liang feel even more secure. No straight cards on boards. Counterfeits a8-7. It's pretty unlikely Wyken has a 5 or would bet it on the flop. So he's gonna be feeling pretty good. Wyken knows that if Mr. Liang had anything on the flop to call with, that 5 doesn't really increase his chances of getting a fold, so... He's gonna be giving up here. At least slow down the betting. There's a chance uh, he'll check call, but doesn't do it. It's a nice respect show there for Mr. Liang. I love the amount of needling in these games. You see people lose hundreds of thousands in a hand, but people know the game is the game. But it doesn't mean we can have fun and laugh at our friends while it's happening. Here we see a Shanghai Wong up to 750,000 in for 400, so almost doubled his stack. <laughs> so we see Tom uh, limping in the cutoff here. Interesting spot. Wyken knows that Elton is gonna abuse his position here since he is on a button. Best position in the game. And Wyken probably believes that he straight up has the best hand here. You'll definitely see uh, situations where Ace 10 is being used as a bluff, but I don't think this is one of those times. <laughs> <laughs> I also just wanted to make sure that that was Mr. Liang's stack. These guys are not tanking in these situations to save face. There you, there you go, he wants to see it flop. He is in trouble though. Well, both players with a piece there. Elton wrong, very slim. Of course, if he hits the 10, his opponent makes a bigger two pair. So he's dead to a queen. Looks like that's a very small bet. 
Thirty thousand. I like that bet. These high boards are so strong. When you put in a lot of uh, action before the flop, no reason to bet big. It's nice to bet small because your bluffs become more cheap and at the same time when you do have a strong hand you get paid easier so it works both ways. Nothing's just gonna raise. I wonder if he just wants to get the money in because Wyken doesn't have that much behind. There are two diamonds on the flop. There is a chance uh, one of these guys could put the other on a flush draw. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. He's all in. Yeah, it's about 85,000 more. 95,000. <laughs> I like that Tom wants to see. That just shows the familiarity of, that these guys have with each other. I mean, how often do you lean over to sweat your opponent's cards with them while they're in a big pot? Yeah, Elton got himself into a pickle here. Last episode, we saw Elton uh, turn a hand into a bluff as well. Uh, he does call. Mike is going to be incredibly happy here. Huh? Really backs himself into a coronary, <laughs> Elton saying, and it's gonna cost him unless he has a queen. Yeah, no. Chop out oh. now as well, of course. Go. Take one seat. Go. 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 No dice. Yeah. They ran at once. Four hundred seventy thousand pound pot there for White and Young. Yeah. Elton not gonna be happy with that one. Tom seems excited. That's a thumbs up from Tan Shuen. I can appreciate a nice big pot. Wiccan Young on the button this time. Very next hand. Yes, I skink. Bench one, 600k. It's a big move against the uh, Home one last time with the Queen Six. Is an excellent hand for the situation. If you flop a three, you're pretty much golden. And if you don't flop a three, it's very easy to get away from the hand. It's very hard to actually kind of drown in a pot. <laughs> Man, it's really triggering me that the dealer is not putting the cards in the box. How can you put them on the line?
Viking, of course, is going to be pretty pleased with this. Very draw heavy board, though. Definitely some uh, possible danger out there. I'm just not even going to say anymore that this is going to get a quick fold or that it's just going to be over and out from here. I mean, I mean, the things we see in these games, the bluffs people try to pull. I'll just wait and see what happens. Not this time. See if he's going uh, for the three feet there. It's two quick folds. Don't think he's gonna get through ten one that easily. I like to check there from Wyken Young, very little he can get called by. Of course, a bench one, not the easiest to fool. Ooh, there's another added benefit of uh, checking the hand through. Only three thousands. Now, Wyken is not afraid of losing his hands. The question is, does he want to open up the action by raising and getting some thin value from exactly the hand that Tenshuan has? Sometimes it can be very scary opening the door against the uh, player with caliber of uh, Ten Shuen, and he is just going to call. Yeah, why can uh, saying that maybe he should have raised? <laughs> Ten Shuen is making a little bit of fun of him. Lovely poker room. Like you're in a castle. This is what a Louis the Fourteenth home game looked like, I think. Liang suited ace. Good enough from any position. I love how often uh, Shanghai Wong re raises. Makes for such fun thoughts. Twenty nine. That's better. 
All right, nice. We see a middle pair with a good kicker for Mr. Three Better Shanghai Wong. Mr. Liang lobs the nut flush draw. Fantastic board for him. Guys have about 85 big lines behind. Ooh. Yeah, Wong decides to take it easy. He's gonna be very pleased to see that king. Once the king pairs on board, it's less likely your opponent has one. His ace jack is gonna be looking a little bit better here for him, but little does he know, Mr. Liang makes a nut flush. This is definitely an action card. Ooh, small bets for Mr. Liang. Might save Shanghai Wang a little bit. Yeah, let's stay small. I think it's time to bring out the big guns. Five. I like the bet size. So hard to get away from this once you've checked the flop behind. Check the flop behind. You call a small bet on a turn. Yeah, what can you do? He's right. You can't really do much about that. Even though this pot got up to 240,000 pounds, I think Shanghai Wang got off pretty cheap there. If you show a lot of weakness, most of the time you have to follow through because people will respond to that weakness and try and bluff you. I got one still with quite some profits. After the hand against one. He's on the receiving end of a re-raise now. And she went on the bottom with a strong ace. Elton Sang in the big lines. Pocket jacks. Guys are about 100 big lines deep. 400,000 pounds. These guys are so aggressive and Ben Xuan knows his reputation. He knows that he's very aggressive, that he likes to bluff a lot, that he likes to put a lot of pressure. One player is bluff a lot and people push back. It's very easy to get a little bit paranoid. But they just don't really respect your raise and that's why they're making a move. Especially having that ace in your hand, it just decreases the chance of running into ace, king, ace, queen. And aces, of course. I really wouldn't be surprised if Tench one decides to go with his hand, but he's gonna see a flop. He's in position.
Health and fishing for some info. Elton can't be too unhappy with that board. And but then she went. He's got a piece on this as well. He knows that Elton is very likely to go all in with the Ace King as well if he were to have that hand. Two overs in a gut shot. You have about a pot sized all in bet. I think Elton's going to be feeling pretty good about his hand now. He knows that Tenshuan doesn't have three of a kind, and if Tenshuan had a queen, he probably would have called already. You can't call a four bet before the flop, flop top pair, and then consider folding. Yep, yeah, he makes the call. What a spot for Elton Sang here. Running it twice means that you need to win both runs to win the whole pot. If you win one of the two runs, you get half the pot. One time, two time. Two time? Very common practice this in big high stakes cash games. Even online. Alright, so first run is for Elton Sang. Each one is a king. Doesn't do it. Nothing saying. Wins it all. Eight hundred thousand pound pots. Biggest pot of the night. He raised. He raised. He raised. <laughs> yeah, nice spot there for Elton Sang. Nice flop there for Duan. Eighteen. Eighteen. Gets yep. it done. Just nice, like Queen Jack matches up well with the ten. You can make some runner straights, you can make a runner flush with the Queen of Clubs. It's just nice spot to bet. You're gonna take that pot down so often. Cash game took place in Mayfair, London. Sponsored by Les Ambassadeurs. We have much more uh, action for you guys in this high stakes cash game. Also, a short deck cash game upcoming. You can find everything, all the cash games on the trites and YouTube. Highlights of tournaments there as well. Taking uh, matters into his own hands here. Because this flop is good enough for Jax. Oh, 
Oh, I'm just gonna peel. Probably thinks one of his overcards uh, might be good as well. Of course, with a six, he makes the nuts. What a beautiful card there, Felton. slightly awkward spots now for Elton after uh, blowing up the, the pot on the flop. Tom almost has two times pot left so he can't really go all in. If you bet 90,000 to set up a river shove or to just protect your hand or get value. If your opponent were to go all in, you're in a very nasty situation. Been quite big here. That's the face of a man that's gonna fold. Always annoying. You hope that your opponent is making a move on the flop. That you get one of those check checks on the turn, you just get to stab at it on the river, take it down. That shot's on the flop. Very underrated by a lot of people they will hit about 18 percent of the time if you flop one i mean with having two overcards that you think are going to be good some of the time but shots are definitely worth fighting for in deep stack the uh, games And again with a button re-raise. And she went again with a very nice uh, low pair. Very easy to just call these re-raises. Flop's the best of it, but can't be too pleased with that flop. Then again, why can uh, has something to figure out here as well. He is gonna go for a bet. Definitely represents a lot of hands around that queen. I like that he takes a small stab at it. Bench one can definitely have a lot of hands that connect with this board, but by betting small, it's like, okay, if you have one of those hands, that's fine. If you don't, I'm just gonna get folds. But Bench one sniffs this one out, makes the call. Neither player are going to be happy with that card. But I think this is uh, a little bit harder on Wai Kin Young. That card is going to be so good so often for Ten Chuan. Wow. This is a really good second barrel here. a very hard bet to make. It's a very scary card for him on the turn there. He gets rid of Tenchuan's hands. Nice aggression there from Waikin Young. Very scary turn, but he read the situation correctly. These two guys, of course, also have so much history together. This could really come down to a similar situation where Wyken played the nuts like that just a few days ago. Guys play all the time, we just happen to have cameras on it this time. 
Why can Young doing very well for himself? Up over 200,000 pounds. See if Shang Wang continues the trend of uh, V-raising with these type of hands. Mixes 47,000. These guys are really deep. Both guys have won a pretty big pot. Except I can't win a pot. Huh? Except I can't win a pot. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Alright, so why can Yong takes it slow? Just to give uh, Shang Wong the, the option to to keep bluffing if he were to bluff. <laughs> Sometimes with queens you get in these situations where if you raise, you keep all their good hands in and then when the pocket's too big all of a sudden you're not too happy with your queens. And when you should be happy with your queens it just folds so tries to uh, stay out of that situation. Makes a small bet, tries to uh, lure some ace highs in. Doesn't get it done. Good discipline by Shanghai Wang not to bet on the flop. The stakes were playing 2,000, 4,000 with the 4,000 ante. All in pounds. Let's check out one takes a small one. Stacks are getting very deep here now. Why can Yong with 700? Shanghai Wang with 600. Elton Sang has a mountain of chips. There we see it. 850,000 pounds now for Elton Sang. Good flop there for Shanghai Wong. <laughs> Elton not ready to let go. He thinks that Shanghai Wong would bet this flop regardless of his holding. If he had jacked then, it seems like a good moment to steal. Yeah, Wong well, really pretending like he has exactly one of those hands. Uh, 
kind of like this check on the river by um, Shanghai Wong. Flush gets there. One of the straights gets there, but if you check the turn, it's going to be sometimes very likely that you have one pair. So if you go for a, a little value bet there on the river, guys like Elton might just put you to the test and make a big check raise. Massive event. The Triton million. Of course, we all know Aaron Zhang won the tournament. Massive score for him. He cashed for thirteen and a half million pounds, sixteen and a half million dollars. I think Kenny actually took home twenty million dollars in that tournament. Made a deal before heads up started leaving for the winner, of course. Hi <laughs> Kenyong won the main event there. Actually, uh, beat Paul Poa heads up. The person he took over the seat from uh, in this cash game. Hi Kenyong took it down for uh, 3 million. One hasn't been able to uh, make a whole lot happen. There's some pretty tough spots. That king on a turn against Shanghai Wong was really unfortunate. Straddle pot as well. The only straddle pot we've seen so far. See him flop best here. Twenty-four thousand from Elton is a double gut shot now. Can make a straight with an eight or a queen. I think he'll be confident that Jack or ten might be good too. There's the eight. A bad run out for Tom Duan once more. Mm -hmm. 
Because I'm just looking at Ideally 2 2 30. 2 2 over best of thoughts it's not a great run out for Tom but it's still hard to put Elton on a on a hand that hits the straight on the river it's a big chance uh, in Tom's mind this is a king or nothing Pocket nines, pocket eights in there too, of course. Well, he knows Elton is capable of anything. Gets rid of it. Great run out there for Elton. But who knows, maybe if the 8 didn't hit he would have been able to pull off the same, but then as a bluff, you just never know. Let's draw the one for you guys. We'd love to see that. We're playing 2,000, 4,000, 8,000. Straddle counts as a live blind, so if it falls around to Elton Sang, he does have the option of doing anything. Benchman thinks Duan is running so bad I need to get away from this guy. Nine hundred thousand pounds exactly there. For Mr. Tang. <coughs> Mr. Liang here. How boss is that to just be called Mr. Liang by everyone? Bench one again. It's lots of uh, small pocket pairs. No success so far. That's the best of it again, but not the best board. Preflop Razor checks though, that does open up a possibility for him, just to bet some protection. He gets rid of the most dangerous player on this board. Big blind is going to connect with a lot of different hands. It's unlikely Mr. Liang has a hand like 10-7 or 7-6 from early position, but for sure that Elton Sang would have those, so definitely not a bad situation for him. People are very tempted to just call with ace highs, rightfully so, on boards like this. Both players uh, turn a straight draw as well. A little bit of an optimistic straight draw for Mr. Liang.
What I like about this bet from Ten Schwan is that it's very small, so it's definitely not a bluff. Like he thinks that for this size, if he gets called, he's gonna be good quite often. The nice thing at the same time, he freezes the river action because he had the initiative on the turn. It's very likely that Mr. Liang, whatever the river is, will check to him. So he just gets to check behind. So he gets some money in against the weaker hands. He doesn't lose that much against stronger hands. Let's say uh, Mr. Liang has queen eights. He probably would have bet bigger than 18,000 himself on the river. So the bet works against pretty much everything in a positive way. Still uh, some equity there for Mr. Liang, but it's actually Tan Shuen who makes a straight on the river. So plans are going to change. He's definitely going to go for some sort of value bets here. So this is a very tough call for Mr. Liang. He's not going to do it. That gets us to the end of the second episode of this amazing cash game here from London. My name is Lex Veltis. I will see you guys next time for more action on the Triton Poker Tour.